Lincoln builds the Navigator on a traditional SUV platform, but can the 2015 Navigator truly carry Lincoln luxury? The Lincoln Navigator shares its platform and almost every bit of gear with the Ford Expedition. That means traditional truck-based architecture, which doesn't really lead to a comfortable ride. But it does mean a lot of room in this big SUV. I've got three row seating and big side windows that give all the passengers a nice view. And Lincoln makes the Navigator exceptionally easy to get into. Along with the big door openings, I've got running boards that automatically lower down and these handles on the A-pillars. A mouse could really easily get into the driver's seat. On the other hand, I imagine many Navigators will end up wearing livery and transporting paying passengers. And these rear seats really look more like coach than business class to me. Given the large size of this SUV, you'll be surprised it only has a 3.5 liter V6 under the hood. But this engine comes from Ford's EcoBoost line. That means it has direct injection and twin turbos. That gives it 380 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. That's enough power to cruise this SUV, but for passing and merging, I really have to get into the throttle. And fuel economy comes in on the low side, only 15 miles per gallon city and 20 miles per gallon highway. That's partly due to the six-speed automatic transmission. A couple more overdrive gears would probably boost the highway fuel economy. But also hitting my mileage is the four-wheel drive option. With this selectable system, I can choose between rear-wheel drive, four-wheel auto, or four-wheel drive, which locks the differential and puts power to all four wheels. That may be useful in some areas of the country, but it takes about two miles per gallon off my fuel economy. Lincoln tries to mitigate the ride quality with what it calls Lincoln Drive Control. With this system, I can choose between sport, normal, and comfort settings. That system affects suspension, steering, and throttle, but it doesn't quite overcome the big jolts I feel in the cabin when I go over bumps. In the plus column, the Navigator has a really good turning circle for such a big vehicle. The electric power steering gives good boost, and I can really crank the wheel around. And I haven't even noticed the front wheels binding when I'm in four-wheel drive mode. For driver assist, I just have a backup camera and a blind spot monitor. Those are useful, but Lincoln really should be offering adaptive cruise control and a surround view camera. Maybe even throw in automated parallel parking. This is supposed to compete in the luxury segment. In the dash here, I've got our old friend, my Ford, I mean my Lincoln, Touch. The navigation system has good looking, easy to read maps, and they do show live traffic, but they take a long time to fill in on the screen. There's no online destination search here, so I just have the usual address entry and places of interest database. Voice command works pretty well for entering address. Say the street address, including the city. One thing to keep in mind here is that this infotainment system is headed for the scrap heap. In a model year or two, Lincoln should be giving the Navigator the new Sync 3 system, which is much, much better. All right, let's price out our 2015 Lincoln Navigator. Base price for the rear wheel drive model goes for $63,115 delivered. Now add four wheel drive and we're looking at $66,690. We've got the 101A Equipment Group on this model, which gives us the automated running boards and Lincoln Drive Control. That adds $7,150 for a total of $73,840. To be honest, I'm not really a fan of this class of vehicle. Traditional SUV architecture doesn't offer the comfort of a true luxury car. Lincoln makes a game attempt at a luxury SUV with the Navigator, but it mostly comes off as a dressed up Ford Expedition. 